the vast majority of the time, having a natural, unmedicated birth is the healthiest, lowest risk mm -hmm. option for mom and baby. Mm -hmm. But we are also lucky to live in a time where if interventions are necessary, that they're available right. and can be life-saving. Mm -hmm. So really just helping um, students know the right questions to ask, to mm -hmm. know whether interventions are necessary or not. Uh, because you can have two doctors who approach the exact same situation in two <laughs> very different ways. Right, yeah. And, and it's important for parents to be able to feel empowered and involved in the decision-making process. Michigan Family Wellness, Episode 12. Here at Michigan Family Wellness, we believe chiropractic care and nutritional-based therapies are a foundational part of a healthy family lifestyle. No matter where you're at in the mitten, having a family is such an exciting time of life. So instead of feeling overwhelmed by stress, fatigue, and responsibilities with the kids, we invite you to become part of this empowering community to create happy, healthy families. By providing engaging interviews and practical applications, Dr. Wallner cultivates family health by equipping our listeners with the tools they need to elevate wellness in their own family. Dr. Wallner passionately serves the Michigan community at his chiropractic and nutrition-based practice, where he specializes in pregnancy, pediatrics, and family wellness care. And now, here's your host, Dr. Kyle Wallner. Good day, everyone, and welcome to Michigan Family Wellness. I am your host, Dr. Kyle Wallner, and I just want to echo everything that Sharon was talking about in that introduction, empowering parents, empowering women, to have those options for their birth directive, those natural birth techniques. So again, without getting too much into our episode content for today, I just wanted to, again, echo those sentiments of, you do have options. There are alternatives out there. And one of the best ways to learn more about those alternatives is by attending the live events at Canton's Summit on the Park coming up on July 16th, we have Chiropractic Care for Pregnancy and Pediatrics, the Female Hormone Symphony on August 6th, and Natural Birth Techniques on August 20th. So this is a great precursor. This podcast episode with my good friend Sharon Quinn, this is a great precursor to all of those upcoming events. So please share this episode with your family, share this episode with your friends, anyone who might be interested in preconception health, fertility, natural birth techniques, like we said there, all of those things. So before we dive into the episode here, let's tell you a little bit about Sharon. Sharon grew up in Marietta, Pennsylvania, and is the youngest of six children. She moved to Utah to attend Brigham Young University and graduated in psychology and sociocultural anthropology. With a passion for international development and activism, she's enjoyed working for NGOs, that's non-governmental organizations, in Seattle and Mozambique. In more recent years, she's refocused on development within the United States and taught in inner city schools in Pittsburgh and D.C. After moving 12 times in the first six years of marriage, Sharon and her husband Anthony are happy to be settled in down, happy to be settled down in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where they've been teaching the Bradley Method birth classes since 2013. As a full-time mom of three, Sharon enjoys spending time with her family, volunteering for her church and a preschool board, and also loves travel, art, politics, and the great outdoors. And remember, everyone, there will be a dedicated webpage for this episode at michiganfamilywellness.com. And if you're part of the 60% of our listeners who listen on their mobile device, whether that be your iPhone or Android, you can tap the album art for the podcast here, and the show notes will expand before you, containing all of the clickable links and resources for you. All right, without any further delay, let's hear from Sharon. All right, Sharon, welcome to the podcast. Happy to be here. Our listeners, the Michigan Family Wellness community is really going to walk away with some value today uh, from yourself. So before we get into a lot of that discussion and that content, you know, I just told our listeners a little bit about you as the professional. Can you tell us more about Sharon as the person and why you're so passionate about serving families? Sure. Um, so I grew up in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. uh, in kind of farmland 
Amish country, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, and then I moved out west uh, to Utah to go to school. I double majored in psychology and sociocultural anthropology um, and kind of grew my passion for um, human rights and international development, uh, which seems probably on the surface kind of unrelated <laughs> to natural childbirth, but I think it's all kind of tied together. Um, mm -hmm. And um, from there, um, I, I moved around a lot and found different ways to uh, serve. I lived in California for a couple years serving a mission for my church mm -hmm. and um, after getting married, moved to Mozambique and uh, worked with an NGO with my husband and um, volunteered in, in different capacities. And um, after after I got married to my husband, uh, I helped him go through grad school. And I was planning on going to grad school, got accepted to a program uh, overseas, mm -hmm. but it, it didn't work out really with... Um, like, uh, my husband finding a job in the country that we were going to. Gotcha. So, mm -hmm. uh, so, and it just happened to correlate with my first pregnancy. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so when we had our first child and it was a really, really good experience, I was like, well, that's what I'll do. I'll become a birth instructor. It just kind of came naturally, I guess. Yeah. So, there you go. Unintended. <laughs> Well, that's fantastic, uh, Sharon. I really want our listener community uh, to be able to, you know, hear what you have to say. That's why I wanted to ha bring you on the show. And I just, again, along with chiropractic and preventative wellness, you know, um, a lot of the things that they talk about in uh, the Bradley Method, for example, which we're going to get into, uh, you know, are really, uh, you know, geared you know, along the same lines as chiropractic and prevention. And uh, there's just so much uh, parallel there that I really wanted to bring you on and get your perspective. And again, just to have you in the community here, here in the, you know, Plymouth, uh, Southeast Michigan area is mm -hmm. just a wonderful, uh, you're a wonderful resource, you know, um, for these people, for this community. So thank you for that. Well, thanks. We're excited to be here. Yeah. Now, real quick, before we get into some of that meat and potato content, as I like to say, Another one of my favorite saying is, our listeners are smitten with the mitten. <laughs> yeah. So do you have a favorite place, uh, maybe a lighthouse or a trail or a lake, uh, something about Michigan that you love that you can drop on our listeners? Yeah. we. Um, I feel like we're still getting to know Michigan, mm -hmm. um, but we really like going camping at Pinckney uh, yeah. Recreation Area. Um, one of our default parks to go to is Parker Mill, um, park, I think mm -hmm. it's called, uh, like in the kind of Ypsilanti area. Um, we really like going to Warren Dunes and just kind of exploring new and different places. Like last summer we went to Holland for the Tulip Festival and it was really nice, fun. Nice, nice. Uh, checked out Grand Rapids for the uh -huh. first time and, uh, this summer we're planning kind of a really long trip, finally making it, it up to Mackinac and the UP. So we're, we're excited. Awesome. Well, I just have to mention, you've now mentioned two things that have made me think of uh, my beloved wife. So the first one uh, being from uh, the Amish country over in Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. uh, so my wife, Rachel, not from that specific uh, Amish community, but from a different one, uh, in northern Indiana. She wasn't Amish herself, but there was uh -huh. a large population of uh, those people out there. And then yeah. they would always go to Warren Dunes as a family. So they would oh, always fun. go, you know, in the summers uh, up to Michigan, Warren Dunes. So that's yeah, just so yeah. great that you uh, also are familiar with those. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I just to clarify, I am, I am not Amish either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just but wanna... it's fun living around them for sure. Right, right. <laughs> Perfect. Well, okay. So as our listeners know, you are a Bradley Method instructor. Can you tell us more about that and what that looks like for you? Yeah, sure. Um, so the Bradley Method is a preparation for natural childbirth. It differs from 
um, a lot of the other methods because it's uh, pretty much as thorough of preparation as you can get. It's mm-hmm. a 12 week, week long session of classes. Um, and they're that long for a few reasons. So, um, it, it takes about that long to get your body prepared. We do specific exercises and, uh, nutrition emphasis. Um, it takes that long to really, um, train yourself to, to relax well, um, mm-hmm. Especially in the face of like potential discomfort, <laughs> um, sure. and it takes that long to train coaches really, really well. So, um, either a spouse or a friend or a doula um, to kind of get to know the laboring woman personally. So for me, I, I love teaching these classes because it's extremely rewarding. Um, to see, uh, people who are nervous and, uh, afraid and have been watching Hollywood movie depictions, terrifying labor and, you know, fumbling husbands, not knowing what to do. Um, you know, see, see over the course of the class, just become confident and still kind of nervous, but then have great experiences in the end. And, um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of really, mm-hmm. really great things I love about it. Yeah. You mentioned Hollywood. I think there is a, a really funny scene in, uh, the movie, the backup plan. <laughs> um, I haven't seen it. yeah. Anyways, it's, they do like this home birth thing and they just really ham it up. It's, it's pretty <laughs> uh, hilarious, you know, but, um, I'm sure much different than what you're teaching and what you're doing, <laughs> which is a much more methodical, you know, beautiful experience you know for the woman for the mother and I'm sure for the the coach as well so Mm -hmm. yeah and I love how your coach you know doesn't necessarily have to be your spouse you know if you happen Uh to not have a spouse or you know you know it could be you you mentioned doulas or midwives you know or or, you know anyone parents yeah we'll have someone have like a mom come in to be a Mm -hmm. coach or sister yeah and I think it's something that I mean there's other techniques out there um like I've heard of Mal- uh, uh, Lama's technique and all of that, and the th- uh-huh. one of the things that I like to, that I like about the Bradley method is that they do emphasize that coach um, component yeah. that many other techniques necessarily don't. Yeah, so. uh, my mom will probably get mad at me for saying this, but because she was a Lama's instructor, mm-hmm. and when I talk about the Lama's class I took with our first pregnancy, she's like, "It's totally different. It's changed." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> than when she taught, you know, in the seventies. But the Lama's method recently retired their, uh, you know, quote unquote, retired their coach training oh, I didn't know that. Uh, aspect because they were like, we would train coaches and it didn't do any good. They would mm-hmm. just stand there in the corner and do nothing. Hmm. And that, that says nothing about the cap- capabilities and compassion of men, but just the quality right, of right. their training. Yeah. Well, I can speak clinically, you know, as a chiropractor, as a as a doctor here locally, I do see a lot of pregnant cases. And not only am I helping people with, you know, morning sickness or low back pain, but I do see uh, those cases that are working with a coach or doing something like the Bradley method, uh, Mm -hmm. their experience, you know, throughout their pregnancy is so much better than Mm -hmm. um, my patients who, you know, aren't doing that or don't have that um, as part of their uh, support. So again, Mm -hmm more encouragement and more advocation for, you know, what you do and what you provide. Yeah, so, yeah that's good to hear. Yeah. yeah. So tell us more about your classes. Uh, you mentioned the 12 weeks. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. Give us an idea, you know, maybe walk us through, you know, maybe the first two weeks, you know, if someone's being uh, interested or perhaps compelled, you're, you know, uh, sparking some interest. What does the yeah. first couple of weeks look like? And, uh, you know, do you, like you said too, you don't have to be pregnant to start the classes, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, and really, anyone could sign up to take the classes. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first two classes uh, emphasize first exercise and then nutrition, and we teach we teach those early on so that people can practice those principles over the next three months um, of pregnancy. And so 
uh, we teach the brewer diet, which um, helps prevent birth deformities and infection and mm-hmm. um, pre premature labor. Uh, mm-hmm. It prevents toxemia, anemia. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's basically a well-rounded diet with lots of whole foods, fruits and vegetables, and a high protein intake. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we really try not to stress anything to do with like calorie counting or, uh, you know, weight gain, stressing out over like gaining right. too much or too little weight. We don't, right. we don't pay attention to those numbers really, but... Uh, we do count grams of protein because protein can make a really big difference mm-hmm. in preventing some problems. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the exercises that we teach are um, specific to pregnancy. Some of them are kind of more like stretches, but we do encourage regular ex- exercise to build up stamina as mm-hmm. well. Um, one example, I guess, would be Kegels or Kegels, mm-hmm. depending on how people like to say it. Those can really help birth go smoothly and prevent injury to mom um, and prevent uh, tearing or the need for stitches and things like that. Absolutely. Um, and then, I mean, as we go on throughout the course, after those first two categories, we have lessons on uh, the coach's role and um judging the progress of labor. Um, we have like a couple lessons on the first stage, a couple of lessons on the second, you know, we just kind of get deeper and deeper. We, um, have some lessons on variations or complications Mm -hmm. and how to handle those because the vast majority of the time having a natural unmedicated birth is the healthiest, lowest risk Mm -hmm. option for mom and baby. Mm -hmm. But we are also lucky to live in a time where, if interventions are necessary, that they're available right. and can be life saving. Mm-hmm. So really just helping um, students know the right questions to ask to mm-hmm. know whether interventions are necessary or not. Yeah. Uh, because you can have two doctors who approach the exact same situation in two d- very different ways. Right. Yeah. And and it's important for parents to be able to feel empowered and involved in the decision-making process. You know, you bring up such a good point and something that I tell my patients too, you know, even for my uh, families that are considering, you know, starting to start that process of beginning their own family and growing their own family is, mm-hmm. you know, consider having what I like to call a birth directive, you know, in the same way that you would plan out your finances or your investments or your retirement plan out what you would how you would like you know your birth to go or your yeah. delivery process to go and actually write it out and mm-hmm. understand that hey this is the ideal this is like if this if things don't go this way if interventions are necessary it's not the end of the world yes. however you know you mentioned empowerment as a you know as a family that does so much you know for your psyche for your mental emotional space um you know, to know that every one of your uh, support team, whether it be a chiropractor or a doctor mm-hmm. or a midwife or a doula or whoever, your Bradley method, like everyone is on the same page. They all know how you want things to go so that there's no uh, miscommunication, if you will. Because uh, that's where I think people really get in trouble. Um, I'm sure you've heard of this before. You know, it's the it's the Tosin epidural uh, spiral, the downward spiral. Uh-huh. You yeah. know, they... Uh, The mother is, you know, due and, you know, she's not, the baby's not coming. And of course it's Wednesday and we want to get out by Friday. And, you know, Mm -hmm. so the doc starts this, you know, Pitocin epidural cycle that not only stresses the baby out, but it stresses mom out. And then before you know it, you have a perfectly normal pregnancy, a perfectly normal uh, situation for Mm -hmm. a healthy delivery turns into, oh my gosh, now we have to operate. Now we have to do a C-section Yeah, because yep. either you're going to go or you're going to lose your baby. And Absolutely. Yeah. I just think there's a better way. And, um, and that's why, uh, I mean, you mentioned birth plans and the importance of, mm-hmm. you know, coming up with a, a strategy. We encourage our students to do that really early on and to start discussing their birth plans with their birth team early on in the process so Mm -hmm. that if they find out that their 
a team of midwives or the, their obstetrician or yeah. whoever is on their team is not on the same page as them or doesn't share their fundamental philosophy of trusting mm -hmm. women's bodies, that they are empowered to find a birth team that does. Right. And um, so they don't have to feel trapped. I think sometimes when when we have a, a doctor that we're kind of like assigned, that is assigned to us, we feel like, oh, we're stuck together as if we're like married for time and eternity, <laughs> you know, where right, it's like, right. you, if you don't like your doctor, just go out and don't make a return appointment, find someone that you like and keep looking until you find someone that is a good fit. Mm -hmm. So again, Sharon, you know, these classes that you do, are they, are you currently in the middle of a series or a, you know, a 12 week course, or is there one starting up soon that our listeners could take advantage of? Uh, yeah, our our next one starts August twenty third. Um, we're we're in the middle of one right now. We're mm -hmm. on class eight, but on August twenty third, we're starting a, a new session. It's every Tuesday night from six thirty to eight thirty. And where do you guys meet? We meet at my home. So, okay. uh, just in our in our family room, we pack in the chairs and make some space for yoga mats and nice. <laughs> throw throw pillows around. But I live in Pittsfield, so it's, it's kind of off of um, 94 and 23, there you close go. to Carpen Carpenter Road. Yeah. And are these large classes? I know we were talking about in the pre-chat how uh, does the Bradley method try to keep them kind of smaller or how large, how big do they get? Yeah, so um, the Bradley method really encourages its instructors instructors to keep classes small from two couples to eight couples large um, because if they get any larger than that it's hard to give individual attention um, during the coach training process and resolving any concerns um, so it's, it's pretty important to keep those those mm -hmm. class sizes small I've never had a class bigger than eight yeah wonderful that sounds great yeah I hope our Perfect. listeners are yeah. able to That's take advantage couples. of that yeah <laughs> Yeah, Thanks. that's a great point too. Again, just to you know, shamelessly plug you know chiropractic here on my podcast. But <laughs> yeah, back to that whole you know, you've got someone they're at term, they're you know trying to initiate delivery. I've seen it happen where I'll adjust a woman who's ready to deliver their baby, but hasn't happened for whatever reason. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, once you remove that nervous system interference, you talked about trusting the woman's body. Mm -hmm. Once that nervous system is free to operate and to function without any interference, mm -hmm. the baby, whether they're breached, they'll, they'll turn, they'll go head down. And then all of a sudden it, everything works great. Yeah. And so that's just so powerful for me. That's why I'm passionate about, you know, what you do. And of course, what I'm able to offer the patient community here at the office. And again, you know, this is exactly why I wanted to bring you on the show now, in terms of more practical applications for people, we talked about the birth directive. Uh -huh. What else can families do in terms of really preparing themselves um, for that natural birth process? Do you go, do, do you go into like birthing centers or um, anything like that? I know I can I know I can speak about the really qualified uh, professionals at the I think it's the U of M midwives. Are you uh -huh. familiar with yeah. them? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually had my last baby with them and they were great. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Congratulations, <laughs> by the way. Now, is that, uh, is that two you. for your family? Uh, three. We have two three. boys and a girl now. Again, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. It's <laughs> awesome. Sorry. Rephrase, rephrase the question one more yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just, uh, for our listeners, speak about the uh, experiences you've had with the U of M uh, midwifery program. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, I've, I've had my children in all different geographical areas. Mm -hmm. um, my first child I had in Pittsburgh and my second in Connecticut. And then we've only been here for um, a few years. So um, I, I was shopping around, really. I kind of interviewed uh, a midwife who did home births and I, um, I got a tour of St. Joe's. Um, to their credit, I would say that the person who gave the tour probably didn't have all, all the details because I've heard great things about them as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I went to the U of M and I found that the midwives had just really great 
numbers like i mean statistics to really back up their okay. philosophy right. um they have a really relatively low cesarean section rate and um just their philosophy in general um is very similar to mine so um yeah i felt really good about it and and they were great yeah something you would recommend to other women i assume yeah yep. yeah i would say um when you're working with a team mm-hmm. of midwives uh which is fairly common especially if you're going to a larger hospital or birth center mm-hmm. um it's they they work really hard to all be on the same page but um it's uh you know, you might not be able to meet the person who delivers you, but you at least have that benefit of midwives having this, um, you know, philosophy that women are designed to give birth <laughs> right. and are capable of doing so naturally mm-hmm. and um, and are expect that as the norm. Yeah. Um, so that's always kind of a, a safer bet if that's what you're looking for. Um, but the, the downside, I guess, of, of having a large team is you might not know the person who's going to deliver you, uh, Mm -hmm. before you actually go into labor. So with my first experience in Pittsburgh, I was really lucky to, um, find a a midwife. He was actually a male midwife. I I was like, I thought people went to midwives because they were women, but he, he was fantastic. He had his own practice but he still delivered in the hospital. Uh Um, So I knew him well. I knew he was going to deliver the baby or catch the baby at least. Um, And then with our second birth, it was a very small practice. It was, it was only three women in a freestanding birth center, mean, meaning it wasn't even attached to a hospital. Right. And so that was really great as well. This was the first time I was working with such a large team, Mm -hmm. but it, it turned out really well. Yeah. You know, and I think there's a population of uh, young women or people out there who they hear about these, you know, really crunchy things like <laughs> delayed cord clamping, you know, placental uh-huh. encapsulation. There's there's mm-hmm. just some some new things out there that people are interested in. Uh-huh. But at the same time, they want to be able to be in an environment where they feel safe. So, for yeah. example, you know, if if they want to take advantage of some of those new things, you know, they may feel like they have to do it like at home. Well, they may they may not feel totally safe at home, especially if it's their first, you know. Yeah. So essentially what I'm saying is, you know, our birthing centers, our places like the U of M uh, midwifery program, are they more open and available to you know, things of that nature or oh, are they pretty absolutely. closed? Yeah. It's the, it's the norm for them to wait until the cord stops pulsing to, mm-hmm. to clamp it. There was a lot of things that I kind of had in my birth plan and they were like, you don't have to have that in there. That's what we always do. That's what oh, we okay, always yeah. do. So that was nice. Um, and I've have stu- I've had students um, encapsulate placentas at mm-hmm. the U of M. Well, uh, you know, not do it there, but preserve the placenta there and right. with no pushback at all, as well mm-hmm. as other hospitals around. I mean, other, yeah, the other pushback, places are yeah. well with yeah. it as well. Um, yeah, I think, I think as far as choosing a place to have a baby, uh, it's really important for couples to consider where they can relax most. Mm-hmm. So I've had, um, let's see, two of my sisters and my sister-in-law have had home births and have had really great experiences. It's it's not for everyone, but mm-hmm. it can be really, really beautiful. Um, but for me personally, I am just anxious enough <laughs> that right. I don't think I'd be able to relax completely at yeah. home. And also I worry about like having to clean up bodily fluids. Yeah. <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, so knowing myself, I know that mm-hmm. I can relax more completely in a place like a, a birth center with midwives. Mm-hmm. And and the more that you can relax, the better birth is going to go for you. Right, right. That's wonderful. One of the things we really stress here on the podcast is practical applications. Mm-hmm. We talked about the birth directive. Could you maybe give us two or three more practical applications? Maybe maybe something you know you've experienced personally. You know, we talked a little about re- relaxation or maybe something, you know, that's part of the content of what you talk about in your classes. But what I'm really looking for is how can we more equip our listeners um, by listening to this episode in terms of, you know, really elevating their family wellness, you know, relevant to 
you know, nat- uh, natural birth techniques. Yeah, I really think reading, read, read, reading mm-hmm. <laughs> is is going to be really helpful. Um, so that's what I did with, with my first pregnancy is I just couldn't stop reading about birth. And I'm not even a really big reader. <laughs> I'm suddenly <laughs> like devouring every little piece of information I could find. And um, I was reading up on Lamaze and hypnobirthing and the all-inclusive books that talked about everything and right. reading about medication. Mm-hmm. And um, and it was th- through labor that I was like, wow, what I definitely found most helpful was, um, was from the Bradley method. Mm-hmm. Um, but besides just gathering information, I think um, couples, I mean, if, if we're talking about like a husband and wife team. Sure. Um, Really, uh, you can start, um, how do I describe this? Uh, practicing relaxation in a commutative kind of way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, communicating and giving each other feedback throughout. Coaches need to learn how to relax too, because if they're, you know, helping a woman through labor and saying like, Hey, relax, you know, it's not going to be very relaxing if they're stressed out. Um, so one of the, one of the things we do in class that's really valuable is just practice different massaging techniques or uh, different uh, pain coping coping mechanisms like hip squeezes or lower back pressure and having women give their coaches feedback along the way and saying no I don't like that oh can you do it harder here or softer here mm-hmm. and that makes it so that in the process of labor, they feel comfortable giving and taking feedback. Whereas, you know, in the movies, like you see this woman, like, don't touch me. Right. This is all your fault. And the husband's exactly. like, ah, you know, we want, we want, you know, uh, couples to be comfortable with each other. And you can be married for 20 years and right. still not learn those skills, even mm-hmm. if you're in a happy, healthy relationship. It, it really does take practice. Awesome. So Sharon, just another reason why I wanted to bring you on the podcast today is because I really feel as if there's this parallel alignment between what what they talk about and what they educate in the Bradley Method is this natural process, you know, this trusting of the woman's body, you know, that the the woman and her intuition and their body, they know what to do kind of innately is the term. And that's very much in line with chiropractic. So when you remove the subluxation or when you remove the nerve interference, then that flow is able to happen. And whether it be back pain or morning sickness or even, you know, transverse or breach presentations, there's been some fantastic documented cases of women really benefiting from chiropractic care. Have you noticed any of those same things in your classes from your students? Absolutely. I I just personally don't know a ton about acu, um, acupressure or chiropractics or essential oils. There's so much that I don't know about. Um, but I've had students who have had really great experiences with going to the chiropractor. And um, I, I think whatever you can do to kind of prepare your body physically as as you prepare yourself emotionally and mentally, all of that can all benefit you as you prepare for birth. Well, Sharon, let's say, you know, someone's listening and they're just feeling motivated and compelled by everything that you're laying down and they really want to get in touch with one of your classes. Uh, Can you tell our listeners where they would go for that kind of information or how you would equip them for that? Yeah, sure. Uh, You can go to www.bradleybirth.com dot com slash Sharon Quinn. Okay. Um, and if that's too long, you can just go to Bradley Birth, Bradley with an E, E Y, Bradley Birth dot com. And there's like a on the left hand side, there's a Find a Teacher section. And oh, okay. Press on that. You can find Michigan, and I'm listed in there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and Sharon, is there? Are there any other resources, you know, you mentioned reading, is there any other, you know, book, anything that you're listening to uh, that you feel would really equip our listeners, you know, to encourage them and spur them on more along these mindsets? Sure, yeah. Um, the, The top reads that I would start people out on would be Husband Coached Childbirth by Mm -hmm. Robert Bradley, Mm -hmm. and then uh, Natural Childbirth, The Bradley Way by Susan McCutcheon is 
really great too. It's kind of like a, a faster, uh, easy read, but with lots of practical information. Um, I also really like Ina May Gaskin's guide to childbirth. Um, it has a lot of different ideas that we don't necessarily teach all of them in the Bradley method, but there, there are some really great things in there. Fantastic. Yeah. For whatever reason, that last one you mentioned, the author sounds so familiar to me. I don't know why, but yeah, she's, uh, she's been mentioned on a lot of documentaries Uh uh-huh. um, Yeah. or, uh, I think, uh, the business of being bored. That's born. it. There's, she's mentioned on there. Yeah. She's kind of like the American mother of midwives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. T- say her name one more time. Ina May. Yeah. Ina, yeah. Okay. Does yep. she have, and I, this could be totally wrong. Does she have a like birthing center, like on a farm somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. They oh, just okay. call it the farm. The yep. farm. Yeah. That's how I, that's how I remember it. Well, speaking of, if you have Netflix, check out the business of being born. Actually, the last time I looked on there, um, it was like the version two, I guess they have uh-huh. the original one. I wasn't seeing that. Um, but oh, the yeah, same people that not. made that documentary made another one. Yeah. Um, but there's, but both of them are great. So I highly recommend checking out, um, both of them if you're able to. Yeah, that's um, how I actually uh, introduced my husband to the idea of natural childbirth mm-hmm. because yeah. w- during our first pregnancy, he was kind of, he comes from this very like medicalized background where sure. the women in his family just are like, why would you want to have a natural childbirth? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so that was a, a good introductory film. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Sharon, I also wanted to drop on our listeners uh, for their information as well. So I do many uh, health and wellness events uh, throughout the year. Many of them are at uh, Canton's Summit on the Park. The one I want to highlight today is Saturday, August 20th, coming up here this summer, Natural Birth Techniques. So we're going to be talking a lot about what we were just mentioning here today, natural Mm -hmm. birth techniques, things you can do you know, before, during, and postpartum to really help drive and elevate your family wellness and the myriad of things, the plethora of things that can happen, um, you know, during that pregnancy period. And, you know, really how chiropractic and, you know, prevention, nutrition, wellness, all of this ties together so that you can have that joyful, natural process. So again, that's Saturday, August 20th. That's at Canton's Summit on the Park. So I encourage people to check that out and put that on their calendar. Sharon, is there any other pearl of wisdom or insight that you would like to leave our listeners with today? Oh, oh, good question. Any kind of Um, inspirational (laughs) quote or anything Um, that comes to mind? Yeah, I would just say that birth is amazing, Mm -hmm. that that bodies are really, really incredible. And and that if you if you educate yourself and take the time to really change um your thinking from what society has probably been bombarding with you most of your life (laughs) that that birth can be a really really great transition into parenthood awesome well thanks so much again sharon for coming on the podcast it's been a pleasure having you today well thanks for having me as i love to say here at michigan family wellness we can do far more together than we could ever do apart Coming to you from beautiful Southeast Michigan, I'm your host, Dr. Kyle Wallner, and this is Michigan Family Wellness. Now that you've been equipped with the latest in family wellness solutions, we want to encourage you to apply these strategies right away. But the thing is, there's still so much to learn. Connect with Dr. Wallner's chiropractic and nutrition office by going to michiganfamilywellness.com and click the newsletter sign-up button to join the informative and supportive community of chiropractic wellness. You will also receive as a gift from Dr. Wallner a copy of Michigan Family Wellness Solutions, an invaluable resource containing dynamic tools to elevate family health and vitality. Michigan Family Wellness wants to thank you for being part of today's podcast. Please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and give us a five-star rating and review. 